Hi everyone, hope that you are all safe and well and a very happy Easter, a happy Resurrection Sunday to you. Let me begin our time with the curious true story of one Mr. Frank Morrison. He was born Albert Henry Ross. The name Frank Morrison was chosen as his literary pseudonym, his writer's name. Frank Morrison was an English journalist and advertising agent, and he lived from the years 1881 to 1950. At one point in his life, Frank Morrison scorned, scorned the Christian faith so much that he personally set out to disprove it. Frank Morrison knew, he knew that if he could somehow disprove the resurrection of Jesus as no more than a myth, that he could destroy the Christian faith. And so he set about his task. Frank Morrison poured over the evidence, trying to absorb all the information that he could, and then putting forth his arguments against the case for the resurrection of Jesus. But then, finally, Frank Morrison had to concede. For not only was he unable to disprove the resurrection, but he was compelled, compelled on the weight of the evidence for the resurrection to become a believer in the risen Jesus. Frank Morrison became a believer in the risen Jesus. He was so impressed that he wrote the classic Christian apologetic book entitled, and I've mentioned this previously, Who Moved the Stone? Who Moved the Stone? That particular book offered a compelling argument for believing the resurrection of Jesus as a historical fact. Morrison also said that the book was for him essentially a confession. The inner story of a man who originally set out to write one kind of book and then found himself compelled by the sheer force of circumstances to write quite another. So on this Resurrection Sunday, may we open our hearts and our minds to the truth of the resurrection and also the title of Frank Morrison's book, Who Moved the Stone? Who Moved the Stone? Our passage is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 7 a portion of which was shown at the beginning of this message video. But let me read it for us. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. 
Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the setting of our passage, it took place early morning, some 2,000 plus years ago, just outside of the city of Jerusalem, at the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid to rest. Three days earlier, he had been put to death at the cross. A rich man and a member of the Jewish religious court called the Sanhedrin, Joseph of Arimathea, who were told had become a secret follower of Jesus. He had boldly asked the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, the same Pilate who had sentenced Jesus to death, to give Jesus' body to him for a proper Jewish burial. And on that same Good Friday, Joseph then took Jesus' body and he placed the body of the Lord in a new tomb or a rock cave belonging to Joseph that had been cut out of the rock, which was limestone. And as the Gospel of John tells us, accompanied by another man, Nicodemus, another secret follower of Jesus, these two men then prepared or dressed Jesus' body in clean linen with a mixture of aloes and myrrh. Then upon leaving the tomb, a huge rock or stone estimated to weigh some one to two tons was rolled in front of the entrance. And from Matthew's gospel, the Jewish religious leaders, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they so feared at that moment that Jesus' disciples would somehow come and steal his body from the tomb and then tell the people that Jesus had been raised from the dead, that they went to and got special permission from Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to have the tomb sealed, sealed by Roman authority. So a uh, soft wax Roman seal was placed at the entrance of the tomb. No one was to break that seal or they would face the penalty of the Roman government, which was death. Pilate also assigned a detail of guards to watch over the tomb as well. So three days later, three days later, that first Easter morning after Jesus had been crucified, his body placed in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, or belonging to Joseph. We're told that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Jesus' earthly mother, they went to look at the tomb. They had earlier watched from afar as Joseph brought the body of Jesus to the tomb that he had personally given up for the Lord. And the women on that early morning had also brought spices to properly dress the body of Jesus for burial. So what truths are revealed, revealed from our passage related to the rolling away, the movement of the large stone, this large rock that covered the, tr the tomb's entrance? A couple of truths we'll unpack in relation to their questions. 
The first question being this, who moved the stone? Who moved the stone? From our passage, we're told that a violent earthquake had shaken the land and whose origin was from the presence of an angel of the Lord who had descended from heaven. Now the angel had gone to the tomb where the body of Jesus had been laid to rest. And it was the angel, we're told, who had rolled back the large, heavy stone covering the tomb's entrance. And then the angel sat on top of the stone. And we're also told from the appearance of this heavenly being, this angel, whose brilliance was described as like lightning and whose clothes were described as white like snow. This angelic appearance, it caused the Roman guards to become so afraid and so fearful from this supernatural occurrence that they shook, literally shook, and became like dead men. They were frozen in their fear, their shock. So again, who moved the stone? It was not by the hands of Jesus' disciples. We're told that upon Jesus' arrest, the disciples scattered. Fearful, afraid that the Jewish religious leaders, as well as the Roman soldiers, would be coming for them next. So they scattered. Who moved the stone? It also was not by the human hands of Jesus. It was also not by the human hands of Jesus. We need to remember that Jesus had died at the cross. Again, for the forgiveness of our sins, all humanity, all humanity sins. And he had taken the penalty of sin upon himself, which was death. So Jesus was dead. He could not have somehow humanly revived from such a horrific beating, from such a horrific scourging, and then his crucifixion. Just no way. He could not have somehow freed himself then from the linen bindings wrapped around his body and then somehow in, in a weakened state have managed to push open this heavy stone, this one or two ton rock that had been rolled across the tomb's entrance. So not by the human hands of Jesus. So who rolled or moved the stone? It was moved by the hands of heaven, rolled by the hands of heaven. The hands of God and his power, resurrection power, had brought back to life Jesus from the grave. It was the Lord God's sure and capable hands that can still bring supposedly dead things back to life, even now. And the Lord God's sure and capable hands that can still move, still roll away stones that to all of us seem unmovable. Maybe this Easter, he's asking you to open your heart, to submit to him and to give to him those seemingly 
dead things. Or maybe this Easter, he's asking you to open your heart and again, to submit to him, to give to him those seemingly impossible or seemingly unmovable big stones, big rocks from your life. Maybe it's in the area of finances. Maybe it's in the area of relationships. Maybe it's in the area of health. Or maybe it's in the area of spiritual unbelief. As we are able to submit these areas to the Lord, again, these seemingly dead things, these seemingly uh, unmovable big stones, as we give them to him, we also need to trust him. Trust him. For as the Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for with God, the God of the Bible, nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing, nothing will be impossible. So who moved the stone covering the tomb of Jesus? The stone was moved, was rolled by the hands of of heaven, the hands of God. And a sec second truth we'll unpack uh, from Scripture in relation to its question is this. Why was the stone moved? Why was the stone rolled away? Again, why was the stone moved? Why was it rolled away? From our passage, we're told that on that first Easter Sunday, again, it was dawn, early morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the mother of the earthly mother of Jesus, they went to look at the tomb, and they also took with them spices to dress or to anoint the body of Jesus. So similar to Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, to give uh, the Lord's body a proper burial. But when the women reached the tomb, they discovered that the large stone, the large rock covering the entrance, it had been rolled away. It had been moved. And the women, they were greeted by the angel of the Lord who had a message for them, who said, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. The large stone had not been rolled away from the tomb to let Jesus out of the tomb, to escape from the tomb. The large stone had been rolled away or moved from the entrance so that the women could check out for themselves what the angel had just said to them. The truth of what the angel had just said to them and also to look inside the tomb for themselves to experience, to see that Jesus was not there. The tomb was empty except for his grave clothes. Proof that the Lord Jesus had truly risen, that he was alive. Maybe 
this Easter, the risen Jesus is asking you to come and see, to investigate, to check out for yourself who he, who he, Jesus, really is. Maybe this Easter, the risen Jesus is asking you to open your heart and to believe in something and in someone that you've never physically seen before, but to see through the eyes of faith. Maybe this Easter, the risen Jesus is asking you to walk alongside of another, someone seeking or spiritually inquiring in order to help introduce that person to or even help lead them to the risen Jesus and the good news. For as the Bible says in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, one of the uh, most well-known of scriptures today. For God so loved the world, all of us, all humanity, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Why was the stone moved? Why was it rolled away? Again, not so that the resurrected Jesus could come out of the tomb, but so that, but so that the women and the disciples could look in and see for themselves that the tomb was empty the reality of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. So, in closing, why does it all matter of who moved the stone of a resurrected Jesus of this past week that we call Holy Week, of Good Friday, and of Easter Sunday? Well, if this last a uh, year plus of the coronavirus pandemic has taught us anything. It's taught us not to take life for granted. Why? Because, as we all know, the effects of this uh, coronavirus pandemic have been so devastatingly far-reaching. So devastatingly far-reaching. And to date, looking at uh, some of the statistics, to date, over 500,000 plus people uh, just in the United States have lost their lives uh, to this dreaded virus. And of that total, over 59,000 plus people have died of the coronavirus within the state of California. Worldwide estimates are close to 3 million coronavirus deaths to date. And for this past year plus, we've all have experienced the reality of being severely restricted, shut down, or closed in the name of public health, including businesses, our businesses, the restaurants that we frequented, the schools, the schools that we either attend or have our children are attending, and even the churches, our churches, not allowed to open 
for public worship, and even now, uh, still in the state of California, fairly restricted. And the result of those tragic consequences, life as we once knew it, it will never be exactly the same again as it was before. Life as we once knew it will never be the same as it was before. But, but, there's a big but, because of the vaccinations, the vaccines that are now available for all of us uh, to take, life is slowly returning to what I would call a new normal. So even though it will never return to what it was before, it is slowly getting to a new normal. And my hope for all of us going forward is that we not simply go back to, not simply return to our old ways of doing life. That we've all learned valuable lessons over the course of these past 12 plus 13 months. Maybe, maybe it's that the lesson we've learned is that family does matter even more now than ever. The importance of family. Maybe it's the lesson to prioritize or to invest our time on things of lasting importance, things of lasting value. Maybe it's the lesson to see life as a precious gift, a sacred gift given to us from the Lord God and that we could be grateful for the life that we've been given, not take anything for granted. Or maybe it's the lesson that with the Lord God's help, we can change the course of our lives with his help and change our lives for the better. That instead of turning our backs to the Lord, we can instead turn our hearts to him. Turn our hearts to him, which will lead to our own forgiveness, wholeness, and healing from the Lord God. Or maybe it's the lesson to choose to live our lives for him the Lord God, and not for ourselves, to not live selfishly only for ourselves. Because the Lord, the risen Jesus, he truly has the best plans for each of our lives. The reality is this. The resurrection was not a myth. The resurrection was not a fabrication. It was not a deception. It was a true historical event that took place. The Lord Jesus died for our sins, taking sin's penalty upon himself, and then was resurrected from the grave to life three days later in order to give us life, abundant life, eternal life for all who choose to believe by faith. Who moved the stone? God did by his resurrection power. For Jesus, the Lord Jesus, is risen. He is risen indeed. 
So happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday to you all. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God who keeps his promises. Thank you, Lord, that there was a resurrection over 2,000 years ago. Not a myth, not a fabrication, and not a deception. Thank you, Lord, for your great rescue plan for the human race that saved us all from the powers of sin and death. And we thank you, Lord God, that Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you that he, the Son of God, willingly willingly took upon himself sin's penalty that we each deserved, which was death. We thank you, Lord, that by the power of your resurrection, Jesus rose from the grave to show his devoted followers both then and now that your power, God's power, is even greater than and overcame the darkness, the powers of sin and death. And we thank you, Lord. We rejoice. We celebrate that because of your great rescue plan, we can, by faith, receive the priceless gift of your salvation and abundant life, an abundant life with you here and now, and, e and an eternal life, one without end, as citizens of your kingdom beyond this short earthly life. Thank you, for you truly are the God of new beginnings, the God of fresh starts, the God of do-overs. No matter where we've been, no matter what we've done in this life. Please help us now to trust you and to be guided by you as we enter this new normal, this new season of life post-coronavirus pandemic. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for taking time uh, to watch and listen to this message video. Have a blessed week and stay safe and well.